Good evening out there. This is Brooklyn Raga Massive, and we are hosting the percussionist and artistic director of Igilari di Piazza, Alessandra Belloni. She is also the uh, resident at St. John the Divine in New York City, and she has designed a line of tambourines made by the Remo Drum Company. and. Before we get into the masterclass and workshop, I just want to mention that Brooklyn Raga Massive is an artist collective and it's dedicated to cross-cultural understanding through the lens of Indian classical and Raga inspired music. The group also ventures outside of, I guess, Raga inspired music and has been featuring percussionists all month. And Alessandra Belloni is one of our featured percussionists. Also, Jamie Haddad will be on soon. And we have a weekly workshop of Carnatic Rhythms with Bala. So there's going to be two workshops every week. And please donate to Brooklyn Raga Massive. You'll see on ViewC there is a place to donate. And um, BRM presents concerts and workshops. And it's a collective that has, has been growing and growing and is, is putting out music from which is inspired by India, but also covering a lot of different other parts of the world. So I want to just mention that Alessandra has uh, two books out there before we start, and um, which she's going to probably mention quickly. And uh, the two books is one I'm going to hold up right here. If you can see it. This is The Rhythm is the Cure, Southern Italian Tambourine. And this is a method book on Mel Bay which is a great music publisher. And she's also going to talk about her, her second book, which just came out, I believe, last year. And that is um, on Healing Chants and the Black Madonna. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Alessandra Belloni. My name is Vin Shala. I'm one of the members of the Brooklyn Raga, uh, Brooklyn Raga Massive Collective. And let's give a warm welcome to Alessandra Belloni. Thank you. Grazie, Vin. It's a pleasure to be with you on Zoom, our first time to normally perform together on stage. But I'm grateful to be able to do this and grateful to Neil Murgai. And I think your organization, Brooklyn Raga Massive, is really important because it does bring awareness not only to Indian music, but to other music from around the world, thus also showing similarities. And most people don't know that, for example, Southern Italian music and Indian music share a uh, very important similarity in our scale. So tonight I will be um, first uh, just doing a little journey through the south of Italy uh, with my friend drums, just doing some demonstration of the healing tradition uh, of our regions. That's why it's called Rhythm is the Cure, because I firmly believe, as I experience it myself, healing myself with the drumming and dance, from a disease many years ago, that rhythm is the cure. So the, especially the 6-8 rhythm of the Tarantella and the 4-4 rhythm that we play for the Black Madonna um, that also have very strong African roots have been uh, known as music and dance therapy. 
So I want to, um, actually, I really want to start with the chant that uses um, that scale that we, I learned through Steve Gorn, the master <laughs> of uh, Bansuri flutes, that uh, the, the scale we use the most in our music is the Lydian scale or the Neapolitan scale of mentored four. And then he showed me a long time ago that it's the same as a raga, right? What is the Indian raga? Yaman? Yeah, 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 man. I, you know, I just know what it sounds like. I don't know <laughs> all the very um, complex aspects of Indian music, but so the it's. I think it's really beautiful to know that, and that means that we come from all have some uh, the same roots somewhere in the world when it comes to music. So I, as you know, I specialize in Southern Italian music, but especially the large frame drums and tambourines. They come from a very ancient uh, pre-Christian tradition, mainly used to honor different goddesses, the goddess of the earth and the, uh, with different names, Chibele from Turkey, Isis from Egypt, and the connection to Egypt and Africa is very strong. And today we use these frame drums and tambourines to honor the black Madonna. So I'll speak more about that. And with this Elian tradition is also the chanting. The chanting is a big part of that. And we use the Lydian scale to really invoke the, that uh, way to calm the mind, to soothe the mind. And so I like to open with this chant. It's called Yeshe Sole. It means come out sun, and it brings the light, the light after the darkness. So I feel we all have been going through a very challenging time. And uh, this is probably one of the... Um, really most difficult time of history, especially in our generation. So this chant is with, the, it's the prayer and the wish to everyone to bring in the light after the darkness. And the <laughs> And I hope the sound is good because Zoom is a definite, definitely a different venue for me, okay? Yeah. So that was just one of our chants from the region of Campania, Naples, used uh, to heal, as I said, to bring the sun energy. So I devoted most of my life to this tradition, not only to perform on stage, but to lead workshops. And, and as I started traveling around the world and I saw other uh, forms of drumming, especially frame drums, I realized how beautiful it is that our tradition from the south of Italy, Mediterranean, going back to ancient Greece, also connected to North Africa, has never really lost that, that fact that it's ceremonial, it's devotional. 
So it's not just entertainment. It's really done with that intention to bring healing, to shift consciousness. And it is, I would say, what well, today you would say shamanic. And I think, Bing, you know that, right? That's what we do. <laughs> we do a little bit of shamanic work together sometimes, That's right? right? That's right. With especially right. our show, Drums of Illumination, when we bring together Native American, Southern Italian, and African. So I'm going to demonstrate, and then I'll be teaching these parents that that particular uh, tradition of the drumming in honor of the Black Madonna, it comes from these pre-Christian times uh, to honor uh, especially the, the earth goddess and the also the roots are also the African mother. So it's a very complex thing to explain. So the book I published, Healing Journeys with the Black Madonna, uh, with inner traditions, it's 435 pages. It's a very long book. It's very deep in my research, my personal healing story. But each chapter also has a legend of the Madonna connected to a goddess with the music, the drumming, and the singing. So this is called tamoriata, which means drumming. And the large frame drum is called tamorra. This is one of the ones that I designed with Remo. And there is an image of the Black Madonna on it. So it's specifically more of a 4-4 four, four rhythm within a triplet improvisation. So I'll play the patterns that we're going to do together, and then I'll sing it a little bit. This is a very short version of a ceremonial drumming that goes on usually all night long, from 8 o'clock at night until sunrise. People gather still in the region of Campania, near Naples, in front of a church where there usually is the Black Madonna or a dark brown Madonna, where there used to be temples of different goddesses, and they honor their fe the feast. Usually it's a different feast day for each Madonna. In the legend, there are seven Madonnas, there are seven sisters, and the, the, the last one was believed to be the ugliest, so she ran away to hide on a mountain, so people really had to look hard for her. And then when they found her, they saw that she was black, and they called her Mamma Schiavona, the serving mother. And they pray to her still today by walking up the sacred mountain, barefoot, usually chanting, again, a chant in the Lydian scale, like the Indian Raga, and doing this drumming when they come out of the church. So the Tamoriata is still performed today. It's a ritual. The dance goes on for seven, eight hours. It's very sensual. It's done by couples playing castanets. And the lyrics are also very sensual, very erotic. And they go back to a time where people would honor the earth goddess by doing fertility rituals. So it's not really Catholic, by all means. It's in front of a Catholic church, but the priests do not really come out for this, but they let people continue this timeless tradition, which I think that's really the beauty of the south of Italy. So um, I know there is a connection. I've never been there with the India, with the festival of Kali, the Black Goddess. 
So that's one of my dream, but I know they do similar devotion with singing, music, and dancing. So I also want to speak and then demonstrate a very important part of our tradition, which is the Tarantellan. So a lot of people may have heard that name in America. I always wondered, I don't know about that, if you've been, Vinny, did you grow up with some Tarantella in your Italian-American family? or? I did grow up with some Tarantella. What yeah. kind of? Uh, well, you know, we only heard it, I only mainly heard it at, if there were family events and it was the older generations and also at some, uh -huh. of, the, at some of the feasts, some of the Italian feasts. That's, that's the place I heard it. Of course, I didn't even associate it with, really with, you know, my great grandparents. But ah, now, well. now I, now I realize, now I realize what that, what was happening when I was younger. That but in this country, I think uh, most people know it as a wedding dance and a very yeah. fun wedding dance, while the, reg the original Tarantella has a completely different right. origins. Again, going back to the pre-Christian times, the Greek times, the myth of the spider, Arachne, which is the first spider woman. So this dance actually is connected to the bite of the spider, the bite of the tarantula, because it's believed, it was believed for a long time that if people were beaten by the tarantula, especially in the Renaissance, uh, and through you know the 1800s, they had to dance a very fast 6 eight rhythm to get the venom out of the body. And they broke the imaginary web by doing this wild dance. But it's only we know from the 1960s, thanks to a publication and a film they made um, in Puglia, in the region where this dance is done, that it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor uh, for a form of depression known as Tarantismo, that afflicted mainly women, sometimes men, who felt really outcast and trapped in the spider web of their society. And in, set, in certain cases, it was even worse. Uh, there were people who suffered trauma due to abuse. So I experienced a lot of healing through this dance and brought it in my workshops. So I'm going to demonstrate the pizzica. It's called pizzica tarantata. Pizzica means bite. Tarantata is the name of the person or the woman afflicted by the bite. And um, normally it's a, uh, there is also violin, guitar, flute, and when you do it on stage, a lot of dancers. But I do teach this uh, rhythm. So I'll do another demonstration. I'll show you how this goes. And then I'll want to teach some of the patterns of Tamoriata and Tarantella. <laughs>
Western long song, and the ritual usually took place in the traditional street dance of Cuba. So actually, this time of the year is a time where originally people felt this sadness, this depression coming. They had to dance, and they would call the musicians to perform this cure. And definitely, this the real origin of the tarantella is music and dance therapy. And the musicians were like the shamans. They knew the cure. They would find different songs for each person, and each person had usually a very sad story. And their only way to get out of that depression was to dance. And the musicians had to do this. They had to do this for three days and three nights until they were cured. And this goes back to the ancient rites of the Greek god Dionysus, also Roman god, where women, Bacchante, honored him by dancing and also playing the tambourine. And um, again, this is one of the things of Southern Italy. This hasn't changed that much as a different name. And instead of Dionysus, now they honor St. Paul. So the feast of the Tarantadi was just recent, was June 29th, the feast of St. Paul. So traditionally, all the people bitten by the spider, the metaphor, would go into a church and go completely mad and dance and dance. And the only people allowed in the church for that collective ritual of healing were the tambourine players, because they knew the cure with the six eight. So the, this, again, this form of playing is really shamanic, and those are the roots. So I'm very happy that I can share some of this tradition with you. I hope some people watching are percussionists and may want to pick up the tamburello. That's how we met, right, Inni? We met with the, somehow you, I think. Yes. You I, uh, I became very interested after watching you perform uh, for two reasons, just to, try to play a different drum than a lot of us grow up playing drum set, try to learn how to play some frame drums and also go back to my my tradition and dig deep into like where my family was from Southern Italy. Um, okay. However, yeah, you know, it was, it's a great experience to just, I think for rhythm to try uh, rhythms from a whole different region than we're used mm -hmm. to growing up from. But I apply it a lot to, I realize now it's full circle. I apply a lot to my, to like snare playing. Ah, right, of course. Yeah. I, I think that uh, we should close with that part. I'm going to do the Tamoriata first okay. and then end with that part of the healing trance rhythm of San Rocco and the Black Madonna. So I want to explain this uh, technique of the Tamoriata. Again, that's the, the drum in honor of the Black Madonna. So uh, it's very important in our tradition to hold the drum very close to your body and to make sure that your arm moves, the arm that holds the tambourine, and that your wrist is very loose because a lot of this uh, sound and, and technique really comes from two arms moving all the time. It's not just the plain hand, but it's also the holding arm. I play with the left, and that's uh, traditionally, that's how women play, but um, there is no real rule. So the first thing, I'm going to explain the way it is in my book, Rhythm is the Cure, the method I developed, even though I learned in the streets by participating in these rituals, no one really taught me. I just had to learn by watching and understanding what people were doing. And then I made it into a method so that I could teach others, especially here in the United States. So I call this slap. You close your hand, slap the center of the skin of the drum, go straight down with the fingertips, so you get that sound. Slap. The other arm keeps moving. You really have to share the weight of the drum with the plain hand. You know, it's better to play standing, moving your body and feel the vibrations going down from the heart chakra to the total place. Again, I want to do eight times, slap, doom, 
And if you're following me, Vin, that's very nice. So I'll do eight alone, and then you come in the second round. So one, two, I call jingle, jingle, slap them, slap them. Moving the wrist in and out. So you strike the, the top of the frame. First, when it moves towards you, then when it moves away from you. So it's jingle, jingle, slap, slap. in and out, you can see that, right? So again, these are rituals that go on for many hours. They're kind of trance rituals. The sound of the jingle is very important that kind of creates the altered state of mind. Not again, anything that is a chakra, all music that, that, is, that is trance induced in healing, there is that sound. It's supposed to really help us let go of our mind, let go of the ego, and in that, state of mind, that's when the people receive a vision or a healing. So the jingle sound is really important. So again, keeping the drum close to your body. Slap them and then do this, and then four times jingle, jingle, slap them. One, two, three, four. 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 Four.
And another fun part of this tradition is an improvisational triplet. <laughs> people can ask us questions, right? Yeah, I just want to jump in here for a second. If anyone has questions, you can ask on Fusi and I'll feel those questions. Uh, Alessandro, I have a quick question for you. If someone at home wants to play these rhythms along with you right now and they don't have a drum, what do you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I played everything that I could hand my hands on. Uh, I even a paper dish. I've had a couple of students joining on Zoom with paper dish. Oh, okay. As long as it's a circular, uh, not too small. Uh, because it's really small, it's harder to play. You need to have it like a 12 inches uh, or 10 inches wide. It could be a tray or a paper dish, but not not a heavier surface. Okay. So everyone out there. If you don't have a drum, you can go grab a paper plate or a tray or something like that and feel yeah, free to play along with something like rhythms. it can't be too heavy. Also, any tambourine will work also pretty yeah, much. Absolutely, I, yes. I know that even if it's a smaller one, you can you can work yeah. it out on that one too. Yeah, and because my students have been following me with those kind of tambourines because Remo has you know, been closed, so now they're starting again to make drums. So, so yeah, you can use yeah. a small one. I also want to the mention ones without the scheme you can't use obviously. <laughs> I also want to mention the sequence you just did for the Temoriata is in your book. So it's yeah. in the book and it's listed out. It's actually written in, in notation as well and the repeats and everything. So 
Right, the notations it. were done by our good friend Gordon Gottlieb. Right. So, the, playing yeah. for the New York Philharmonic at That's the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because I really don't know. I, you know, I learned everything by ear. Everything is uh, done, you know, as I said, orally, with oral traditions. So I really don't know how to write these things out. And I'd rather follow my ear and my heart than write it out. But it helps people study music. So the book, you have both. You have the DVD. You have the, you know, live with me. And then you can follow notations. I would say in general, most folk music is orally transmitted and by tradition anyway. And we just, you know, conservatories and everything else seem to have, we've wanted to write things down now. Mm -hmm. But there's, and I know in universities that even teach world drumming or whatever you want to call this global yeah. drumming, that there's a hybrid. It's orally taught and right. the notation could be Western notation or it could be, for instance, in as we know in North Indian or South Indian music, you know, we're using syllables or bowls on tabla. And right. it's, it's transmitted, it's written totally different. So I, it's finding it interesting that different cultures have a way to write it down. Yeah, and I think, I, I think in your in book... In India, first you have to sing it for a very long time before you play, right? You have to sing it, yeah. So that's how I developed the method with the sound, because I took some lessons from that master of Kanjir, Ganesh Kumar. Remember him? Yeah. Yeah. He's still, I know he's still around. And then I realized that I had to start teaching a method because Rima wanted me to teach had a, you know, make it accessible to people. And I realized, well, obviously this is not Indian music, but they, they speak, they speak everything. So I came up with these sounds. Because no one in Italy does that, nobody. Right. <laughs> they wouldn't even <laughs> think about that at all. I, in India, they do, right? But it, it's like my own take on how do you teach an obscure technique? You gotta sing it <laughs> and make it work, you know, translate the sound to what your hand is doing. So um, again, when I was saying before, this, this rhythm is very sensual. So it's the music and the dance. This part, the next pattern, is the one that I find the most sensual. It's really played down here in your solar plexus. And it starts with the triplet. So it's First thing people learn usually is the pattern on your plain hand, and then it becomes uh, uh, together. So now we're going to put them together. We have only one pattern left, and then I'll explain a little bit the pattern I love. Um, so it's eight times blah, two, four times ding, blah, two, four times ding, blah, ding, blah, Four times. And then four times. So, um, this is a slower rhythm, obviously, when the time we do the time we have this a bit faster, but let's keep this one. Ready? One. Three, four, Four. Four. 
If you, if you translate, you will find out that it takes a lot of stamina, and uh, the stamina really is part of the technique that you develop by moving your arm. And then, if you're part of a ritual, you will feel the energy coming more from a, the spiritual world and the earth, especially in these places where usually they're really beautiful in a sacred mountain or by the sea, and people gather, make a circle, play, and sing all night. The energy just keeps going, and the wine is a big part of this because it goes back to the ancient rites of Dionysus. So people start playing after they've had a lot of wine, and not because we will really just go out to get drunk, but it's still part of that devotion. And that wine, usually it's homemade, it's very special, you can only find it in certain locations. And so within that is a ritual, like I would say among the Celtic, is the beer when they do their rituals. So um, the last pattern is very important um, pattern for the black madonna called advocata the advocate the one that advocates with god for us that negotiates for us and um there is a mountain called somma vesuviana near naples um but up on a mountain overlooking the sea in the amalfi coast and people go up for a feast usually in june doing this rhythm that we're going to do now in unison hundreds and hundreds of people it's really powerful and when they arrive there where there used to be a temple for the goddess chipel and now there is an icon of a very dark brown skin madonna people kneel and pray and ask for miracles and then they start the party and they dance eat and a lot of food a lot of wine and it goes on for hours and hours so here is the rhythm <laughs> All the patterns, and now we're going to put them together. Uh, I'll do it one, I think, one time through, and then I'll show you a little bit of normally how faster it would be. Um, so, ready? Follow me, Vinny, yes? And <laughs> pull the other people. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
So again, this is my method. It follows what I think makes sense. It's like, but in reality, the song is improvised. And you would, you know, if you were to do this with our group or you know, situation in the south of Italy, everybody is improvising. And usually, the player follow the players follow the singers. So and the rhythm is just a little faster. I want to go a little bit into the triplets of the tarantellas, I just want to show that normally we can... But normally that would be the time. Okay, Vinny, should I, should I go into the triplets or? Yeah. yeah, I think so. If there's any questions about the last sequence in the Moriata, feel free to write in the in the chat there. Or any other questions? We'll uh, at the end of this demonstration, we'll be getting into a, getting into a little discussion. So feel free to write anything down you like there. Yeah, I'm curious. I hope to get some questions. So the other uh, technique that um, that I play and teach is the triplets of the tarantella, the six eight, which is more complex to explain in a short time. To play for a long time, the tamboriada is harder. So once you learn it, it doesn't mean that it's easier. I find it easier to explain for people to learn. And then once you learn it to really play in a song, the tamariata is very complex because you have to really understand the music to play the right accents. Um, but the tarantella that I was playing before so fast takes more time to really make people play it. <laughs> What I learned a lot of uh, playing drums for this song is it's the only two traditions where you play both by using the rim and the plain hand in southern Italy and Brazil, where you move the tambourine. But the tra tradition, and again, it's closer to us because of that tradition, is the kanjir, is the South Indian tambourine, which I studied a little bit. It's very complex, but I realized that the motion of the wrist is pretty much the same, it's just you hold the hand completely different. So our our wrist is based on a very loose wrist, and the way I teach it is to learn the first part of the triple is to strike the center of the skin with your thumb, rotate your hand all the way up and move your elbow up, otherwise you want to get the thumb, and then go down with your fingertips to get that triple. But it's really important to hold, again, the tambourine close to your body, down and not up and not straight. I love tambourine at the rick and other instruments. I kind of like this about how it works. So, Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to get my tamburello. Tamburello. Let's see what I have here. So normally I would do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the student repeats that. Student. Okay. I'm gonna get my. I'm gonna get your black Madonna. You got it. Tamburello. You, you had the right tamburello. Whatever. I, yeah, I could get that one too. How do I like doing on this one now? Okay, so I'll do eight and you answer eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I'm gonna get. 
get the other one. <laughs> it's easier on the little one. Yes, Anybody to do it slow like that, this, yeah. To go on the small one. Yeah. Let's do that one more time and and then uh, we can do a little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. So let's do a little. Can we do a little faster so people see what's going on? Yeah, I'm going to keep Huh? I'm going to get my other tim because this one is actually it's okay, a little loose. Right. Uh, all right. I like to use it's just so I, I want people <laughs> to see that how we, I would do yeah. a call and respond. So, and then a little okay. faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, again, it's really big. Good. I did too many more. <laughs> so let's do it a little faster so people see how actually the speed comes. Across. Just show the whole accent um, and then do that the healing chant of the Black Madonna with the rhythm of San Rocco, which I will explain. So, there are many, many ways of playing the Tarantella, many, many traditions in Calabria, Puglia, Napoli, Sicilia. But this accent normally, now we were doing. Just Ancestors are also Calabrese. So there is a beautiful tradition 
in Calabria, which is really the toes of Italy, um, they honor the Black Madonna and the saint San Rocco with a fantastic tradition of using snare drums, but also tying tambourines in procession. And it comes from the Middle Ages, from the time of the plague. So this is something I've been feeling for many, many years that we are kind of back in the Middle Ages before the pandemic came. Been knows because it was in my shows, we portray this on stage. I've created this scene, I created this whole concert based on this because like many people like me who are a little bit clairvoyant, healers, whatever you want to call us, <laughs> we travel through different dimensions and come back. So I've had a lot of premonitions of how was happening today. And I always wish there was something that would happen later on after I die, but we're in it. So I believe that it's a cycle we're in, that the earth is rebelling, that the earth needs us to stop. So in the Middle Ages, what they did, and in the south of Italy they still do, is they drum a uh, very fast 6 eight rhythm, and they do it, they did it then at the time of the plague. They would process with San Rocco, the saint that healed people from the plague, and with the Black Madonna, known as La Madonna dei Poveri, Our Lady of the Poor, a very powerful uh, Black Madonna. And she uh, still venerated today, worshipped with this procession August 14 in a town called Seminara. So um, I want to show how that rhythm goes, and then we should do that song. That it's a prayer um, from the Middle Ages from Spain and Southern Italy. It's called Cunctissimus Cuncanentes. It's a medieval prayer to the Black Madonna, done to heal and send away the fear of death, by the way. The rhythm that I want to show in this little tambourine uh, is... <laughs> with us and it's very very powerful so on the big drum it starts with the slap Musicians, Steve Bourne, John La Barbera, we have arranged it, but um, originally this is all done mainly just with drumming, dancing, and spinning. People spin around and spin around, very similar to the dervish, to the Sufis, but in our tradition, people spin different directions. Again, to send away fear, fear of death, and to bring in healing. And that's again the power of this rhythm. So, you want to play with me, Vin? So again, this is a prayer called Cunctissimus Cuncanentes. I will, I will also post the link in the in view C. So the video. We, so about the video, yeah. Yeah. So I was, uh, can I say that before we say that while the pandemic was here really, really strong in New York, I had this very strong uh, vision that I had to do something. The Black Madonna really called me to do something, to honor her and to pray uh, with the collective ritual. So I had a very strange experience. I was here alone at night. I live on the water in, 
in New Jersey, in Edgewater, and there's no one around at night, and I heard all these voices come in, and I really kind of freaked out, and I looked out in the balcony, there was nobody there, and the voices were like people praying in a church, like a rosary, and it was very strange, and then I just let it go, and then I heard it again, and then the second time was more like moaning, people were crying, or people dying, and I really felt that, and then I realized, look, I have to do something, but I didn't know what that really meant. And then when I decided to go to bed, it was like 2.30 a.m. And I just looked at my phone, you know, to, to turn it off. And this song on YouTube appeared three times by itself. Puntisimus wow. concanentes. One is the version we have made ourselves on our show with the, you know, the still dancer playing death and us possessing. And then two versions that I didn't know existed, the people put online, online without my permission of our song, <laughs> but it was a very clear message that I was supposed to do this. So I drove all my musicians crazy and everybody came in and we recorded this individually and we followed uh, my vision. And so if you put the link on this, it's very powerful. Um, I, a lot of people commented that they were really touched. It's been going around now for about a month and a half or so, but. It was really a work of love, and I think it, it does help to pray together like that, as they did then in the Middle Ages. So, I, I, felt, I felt it was the best thing to do at that time, was to have some kind of healing ritual, and, and this is something that has been around for, what, hundreds of years? Yeah, well, so, from the 11 hundreds for sure. So it was, uh, I felt it was the best the, yeah, I, and I'm being posting it again because in this country we're not in a very good situation. So if you will that's right. look at this video, you can keep praying and send this prayer to the Divine Mother and ask for him and to the African Mother because that's also what we need. So I'll begin, okay? <laughs> Thank you. 
To the world. Great. So do you think that, was... that I think I share what I wanted to share pretty much about the healing tradition of this yeah, underneath and that's why I call it rhythm is the cure. Um I lead workshops usually in Italy every summer. Right now no one knows if we can leave or not. It would be happening in August, August 17th through the 24th in Sicily or later on, and um, I teach here online, I teach everywhere in the world, and uh, if people are interested, of course, they can continue to learn. But um, let's see if anybody has questions. Yeah, I'll just type and do see. Yeah, that was great. Um, thanks for demonstrating those rhythms and also performing the songs that go along with the rhythms which is, uh, like you said, it's very important, right? As you were saying, that we to learn the music, is learn, you learn the rhythms, but to learn the music is at a whole nother level. Yes. Then, then you connect those rhythms to the songs. To the songs, right. Is, is when you really start taking it, taking it in. Uh, so let's see on, I'm just looking here, if there's any questions. Uh, we have, we're just about out of time, but we could probably take a question or two before we finish here. Just gonna look if there's any questions on DC. No, no. We have people watching, but I'm not sure if I see any questions. Uh, also, if you feel if you've been watching this and you enjoyed it, feel free you can make a donation right there. Hit the donate button. You can donate to. It's a nonprofit organization. Very important. Uh, yeah. I th I think that's pretty much that that can do it no for today. No questions coming in from anybody. No. I, I'll give one more minute here. One more check. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. There we go. Yes. Hey, this is Neil speaking behind the scenes here. Neil Magai. Alessandra, yeah. how long have you been working with Steve Gorn and uh, other oh. musicians who play Indian music? Uh, since the probably eighty. 1988, something like that, 1987, with John LaBarbera since 1976, whoops. And my group, we founded John LaBarbera and I together uh, 40 years ago. So our group has been around for 40 years. Well, we were supposed to have your, your band's performance in May and that got right. canceled. So I'm so glad that we got to have, have you do this today. Thank you. I would love to do it again when we're all be able going to be able to be together because that was really magical. And you're yeah. a, a master musician and it was really fun to be together. We should make a recording of that someday. No one has done that. I don't think yeah. anybody's done Southern Italian and Indian music together. Yeah, hopefully we can do some more of that. Yes. So anyone else has questions or let's see. No. Alessandra, can you just mention quickly about some some of the musicians like you just mentioned, Steve Gorn, uh, I know Glenn Velez, Jamie oh, yeah. Haddad, um, the various musicians that have been in Gilardi di Piazza, or just <laughs> uh, just about. Uh, I remember, for instance, Saint John the Divine. I vividly remember after a performance that everyone would go to the crypt, and it just the became famous crypt. Yeah, can you just? Speak well, about we, that for a minute. We, were, we had a great time. We were artists in residence. We still are, but at that time we had a studio under the cathedral in the crypt, and we were in the studio that used to belong to Paul Winter. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, some of the musicians of Paul Winter had joined me, like Jamie Haddad, Glenn Velez, Gordon Gottlieb, and even Steve Gorn has played with Paul Winter. So right. we used to have great parties after a show. And then it's where a lot of things happen. Like if people really let go, especially like when we did the Pizzica. People experience the healing, the trance part. So uh, I was very lucky that all these great musicians came into my life and have performed with me. And I really am very proud of that, including you being in yeah. the music we play. It sounds great in our CDs and all that because every single musician, Joe Dennison on violin, Steve Gorn, Donna Barbera, Wilson Montori, 
mm-hmm. and others that have come in, including Glenn Miller's Charlie Giordano, who now plays with Bruce Springsteen, right, right, right. Um, have brought their own interpretation of this music, which is different. This is important, actually, this one, from what groups do in Italy. This group, these groups in Italy are very doing well, really well right now, like CGS. They travel around the world. There is a great revival of this music in Italy, especially the Pizzica and Tamoriada. But they pretty much all sound the same, if you've noticed, because they live in Italy and they only hear this music, you know, so it, it is regional. Unlike us, we're in New York and I have the blessing of these incredible musicians. So we bridge with India and other places, and Africa and North Africa. So I'm not saying that we're necessarily all better than what's happening in Italy, but I think we're more global. And, um, and that's important because in certain places, unlike, like I think New York is really special, and I hope that we all come back and play together. And that's why I love what Neil is doing, is to really say, okay, we're traditional, we play this music, but we open it to the world. And then it's meaningful now, bringing people together, that shifts the consciousness of people that may just be stuck in a box. Make sense? How, yeah. How, <laughs> yeah. How, did, how did the residency at St. John the Divine, did that help shape? Sure. What, you're, what you're speaking about with the Dean, Dean Morton. Yeah, Dean that Morton can... that passed away in January was my mentor, my spiritual father, James Parks Morton, he invited us to be artists in residence there in 1990. And everything shifted because of that, because being around certain people who had a mission in life, like Paul Winter, you know, he does music dedicated to the earth, to the animals. I don't think my life would have been the same without Dean Morton, about, and mm-hmm. without being a St. John the Lion. I try to imagine that, and I can see now, I would have probably just done very small things. You know, when, once you're exposed to that, then everything changes for the best. Inspiration and creativity. Right. Now, your openness to all these types of music, I mean, I, I am really impressed by, by that. And when I first met you is, well, you're doing your traditional Southern Italian music, but then, okay, let's play some Foho. Or let's yeah. from North Brazil. Yeah. Or let's play uh like let's take out the Doombeck and the Rick and let's play some ballady and some Middle yeah. Eastern. So how did how did that come about? Like from I your think upbringing that or it really happened also when I became a Remo artist. When Remo signed me up in nineteen ninety six and I started traveling in the world in ninety eight, I went to Brazil and I went to a lot of places and I was in this huge percussion festivals with people from all over the world. Right. Everything changed. And I, I realized I could play Tamburello in Brazilian music. And um, from there, there was no coming back. You know, like the like the same thing. You're gonna go around the world. Why people don't want to know about the tarantella? So it, it just happened, you know, like that. And um, and I also was inspired by Glenn Velez. Glenn Velez was my first student of Tamburello back in 1982. And then he told me, ah, keep doing this, Alessandra. It's really important. And, and then we collaborated. So when I collab- collaborated with Steve Gordon, Glenn Velez was another opening huge for me. And I, one of the albums, is it Earth, Moon, and Stars? Earth, Sun, and Moon. Oh, oh Sun and Moon, sorry. That is a great album. If if you want to uh, listen to an album uh, from that period or that era of time, I would recommend yeah. to pick that up. I can I can put that link in the chat as well. Thank you, and, because yeah, I want to do that with John La Barbera. That's what I wanted to say. John and I are deciding to do some concerts together and go back to that music. So John La Barbera is also a ranger. Yeah, composer. De Piazza, a composer, yeah. and he has written books that are on Mel Bay as well that he he codified some of the southern italian songs into these books where it's 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 uh transcribed and right. it's written out in notation and everything so if you're interested in that i want to mention that those are especially great for mandolin well. and guitar yeah violin man yeah, he's, he's a very good guitarist and mandolin player and we think we could do this online uh to do a couple of you know two concerts where we bring people back to those especially those days of earth sun and moon where we wrote music for the Black Madonna for healing back in the 90s. <laughs> right. We're going back, but we're, it's important today, right? It's very relevant. Well, that's the last thing I want to say before we wrap is uh, wrap up. Is all, I also want to mention is although you're playing 
in the tradition, you always seem to have that foot in the future with doing some electronic music and these other things. Oh, yes. And, you know, I just had this <laughs> the quick memory of, of playing in the show, you know, with, with uh, you know, Tamborello. And then all of a sudden I got to put my headphones on and I have to play along with the track and do this and make sure my, my, uh, whatever's working there, Ableton Live, <laughs> whatever I'm running is working. And so I, I'm going back and forth. And I just found that also to be, uh, you know, something that's really important to learn that, or just to remember that as a musician, that you can still try these other things and new things and Absolutely. incorporate incorporate that tradition. So, um, or do you plan on doing anything in the future that's after that? That is our or? biggest show ever, Tarantella Spider's Dance, right? Mm -hmm. Dedicated to the healing power of the Tarantella, the story of a woman, Tarantata. And I was obsessed with doing that musical using electronic music. And I... Still love that, you know, and Vinny, you were very important with those tracks. I found it extremely difficult, very, very difficult for someone like me and you to just do everything acoustic, to go yeah. into tracks, yeah. electronic, and, tr and follow the track. But yeah, we did yeah. it, I think it works. Yeah, I still yeah. love that. I, right yeah, now, yeah. I don't see myself doing it because I really believe that right now we need more um, acoustic devotional right. music. Yes. But, um, you know, you know me, I, I, I can... <laughs> Go back to that. Right? Yeah. And I think electronic music is important for especially for young people to bring them in with the track. Right, Stop. right. Well, that's it's it amazing. Yeah, it's amazing how open you are to every style. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to do the next, the like the trap record, uh, Tarantella meets <laughs> trap music. So, um, thank thank you so much for for here, Grazie. Thank you. Yeah, thank I you really for your appreciate help. that. Thank you, Brooklyn Raga Massive. This has been a workshop, great workshop with Alessandro Belloni, the uh, percussionist and musician, and also composer, writer. Uh, has She has two books. Uh, do you want to mention quickly? Uh, yeah, the, the new one is a very important book today, Healing Journeys with the Black Madonna mm -hmm. by Inner Traditions and Forward of a, from a very famous writer, Matthew Fox. It's doing very well. It's been number one on Amazon under dance and folk dance, also available as an audio book. Great. So my project now is to work on a film based on this book. That's next. That's next. <laughs> and no. so, great. And then the method book was Rhythm is the Cure. That's on Mel Bay. That's a, yeah, that's on Mel Bay. It's still available. And it has audio examples to that as well. Video and, and oh, this look one has it. audio. Yeah, this one is audio. The other one is video. It's like there's a cat in the... Uh, who wants oh. the cat it's a good easier. thing he's on Zoom because I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> so again thank you so much for this this workshop and thank, thank you. you brooklyn raga massive neil praveen who are behind the scenes running things thanks neil and, and i'm vin i'm signing thank off you, everybody. thank you alessandra thank you and look out for the next uh, <laughs> rhythm workshop on carnatic rhythms which is coming up too so stay tuned for that it's coming up and this i week. teach online so if anyone wants to get in touch let me know okay bye-bye Ciao. Ciao.